So my trading to on two investment portfolio is down £3,134 in just six days as big tech stocks are verging on bear market territory. Apple stock is down 5.4% from all time highs, Tesla down 11.8%, Amazon stock down 12.6%, Meta platforms down 14.1%, Advanced Micro Devices down 18.4%, and Palantir Technologies, well, let's not even go there. Yes, I've pretty much recited all of the major holdings within my investment portfolio portfolio that have taken an absolute beating over the course of the past couple of weeks. Now I'm sure like me many of you guys are possibly invested into some of these other big tech names and as a result you guys have probably likely seen a sea of red across your own investment portfolios too. But before everybody goes into panic mode and looks to liquidate all of their holdings during today's video guys I've got some perhaps enlightening data which I wanted to share with you guys which may not paint as doom and gloom of a picture as in which we're currently seeing in the media. I'll also share how things could certainly return to the upside soon rather than later and I'll also share my own personal investment portfolio towards the end of the video to share with you guys exactly my own individual holdings and which ones have been worst affected. But before we begin guys for those of you guys who are new around here my name is Mitch I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market if you do enjoy content like that hit that big red subscribe button down below as well drop a like on the video guys it really really helps out the channel. That being said, let's dive straight into it. So let me be honest, it's not just big tech that's taken a beating over the course of the past month or so. In actual fact, many of the other economic sectors out there have also taken a beating too. Over the course of the past month, healthcare, industrials, consumer cyclical, communication services, and technology have all been the worst performing sectors. So the chances are if you own stocks within any of these areas, then the chances are you've probably seen a little bit of red across your portfolio. But despite this, it's probably not something to get too hungry up on because historically speaking January is actually one of the worst performing months for investment portfolio returns. When we look at some data from the S&P 500 over the course of the past 20 years, in actual fact during the month of January we've only seen gains 45% of the time. And on top of that January is actually only one of three months that actually post consistently negative returns for the stock market. To dig into that data in a little bit more detail, Q1 is actually the worst performing quarter of the year, gaining just 0.7 percent on average compared to Q2 gaining 2.4 percent, Q3 at 1.7 percent and Q4 at 4 percent. So as this chart shows it's certainly likely that we'll see a little bit of uncertainty in the first few months of 2022 before prices start to pick back up before the end of the year. Now as much as we're certainly facing into unfavorable market conditions with inflation certainly soaring to multi-decade highs we've got hawkish sentiment coming out from the Federal Reserve as well as the possibility that interest rates could go up over in the United States they have already started to go up over here in the UK but despite this the data certainly suggests that this kind of market performance is very much consistent with just broader cyclical market conditions. Plus to compound this and consistent with the data in which I've just presented to you guys during Q4 of 2021 that was also a very strong performing quarter of the year with the S&P 500 gaining 6.66%. So hopefully we won't quite see the devil come out during Q1 with absolutely all hell breaking loose and hopefully this is just a little bit of of kind of market calling off time as the market has very much been trading higher throughout the course of the past 12 to 18 months. Now of course that might not really help you out when you're looking into the unrealized losses within your own investment portfolio currently just like I am but what I tend to say to kind of friends who kind of talk to me about investing into the stock market who are considering selling out of their positions because the stock market is falling down and the kind of thoughts come into your mind around a potential market correction, perhaps even a market crash. The one thing which I always say and kind of an investment philosophy which I go by, which is if you're in doubt, be sure to zoom out. In reality, what we've experienced over the course of the past couple of weeks or so is very, very small in its entirety when we talk about the overall valuation of the stock market. Because the truth is the S&P 500 has only actually sold off just over 3% from absolutely all time highs. As of right now, we're not even one third of the way towards a market correction, let alone a full blown market crash. Now you might be kind of questioning, well, am I personally ruling out a correction throughout the course of 2022? Well, I certainly don't think you can rule anything out just now, but the reality is we're not even close just yet. The most important thing that I feel like I should probably reiterate is that when we look at this chart, which is 
the one month view of the S&P 500, painting, of course, a very negative picture. When we compare that to the five year chart and the five year performance of the S&P 500, things look very different. And if you are predominantly a long term investor, just like me, then use that kind of longer term time horizon chart to kind of give you a little bit of an additional confidence boost, as well as more conviction in your own investment portfolio's performance over the course of the long term. So with that in mind, what else should we be actually looking out for? Well, for me personally, there are a couple of different factors which I'll be very much paying close attention to over the course of the next couple of weeks, which could certainly affect the overall valuation of the US stock market. One of them very much being the Federal Reserve and its approach towards monetary policy throughout the course of at least the first half of this year. And the reason why I think that's so important is because as I was watching the European Open on Bloomberg this morning, they were referencing the fact that inflation could rise once again over in the United States from 6.8% to 7.1% during the month of December. I'll overlay the numbers if they've come out by the time you guys are watching this video. But the truth of the matter is, if inflation continues to rise in the aggressive fashion in which it's done so over the course of the past couple of months, the Federal Reserve will certainly need to take action by increasing interest rates. And as a result, I think that just more broadly will certainly be unfavorable for the stock market. And to be fair, guys, I think we probably just need to be a little bit more open minded around the current market cycle in which we're currently in. The reality is we've had 12 to 18 months of very, very strong market performance. And in actual fact, if we just take away the March 2020 market crash, we've actually seen a very, very long and established bull market since pretty much the financial crisis of 2008. We've enjoyed over a decade of gains in the stock market. So the reality is even if we do see a brief period of a market correction, it's not something to be too worried about over the course of the long term anyway. If the Federal Reserve do go down the route of hiking interest rates, which if I'm honest, I think that's already being priced into the market right now. And we go through a phase of contractionary monetary policy. Well, it's certainly something that we can't really grumble at too much, driven by the fact that the market provided us with returns of over 22% just in the past year alone. Now, does that mean that it's all going to be doom and gloom throughout the course of 2022 with negative market returns? Well, actually, many hedge funds as well as many analysts have put out that they believe the stock market could still gain between 5 and 10% throughout the course of 2022, but just certainly expect that market performance might be a little bit more average this year. And to be fair, I'm not really telling you guys anything that you don't already know, because when I put out a poll on my community page just a few weeks ago, actually 56% of you guys only expected to achieve 5 to 10% returns in the stock market in 2022. Regardless of average returns in the broader market, I know some of you guys, along with myself, have certainly invested into, I guess, more speculative, high growth stocks like Palantir Technologies as an example, and pretty much anything within Kathy Wood's Innovation ETF is certainly not really set up for fantastic market returns throughout the course of this year either, simply down to high levels of inflation and the potential for interest rates going up, which really doesn't bode all too well for these these kinds of stocks. So if you are predominantly invested into many of these more speculative high growth stocks, just be prepared that it might just be a tough year ahead. So with that all in mind, I know I've spoken quite a lot about the overall market conditions in which we're currently facing into. In light of the transparency which I like to hold on this channel, I thought I'd now share with you guys my own personal trading 2 on 2 investment portfolio. We'll discuss some of the holdings within it in a little bit more detail and just share with you guys my overall mindset and thought process as we're going through the portfolio. So up on screen, guys, you have my personal investment portfolio with a current account value of £26,357, invested uh, just under £21,000 with a return of 5422 quid. You can see over the course of the past month or so, we saw a absolute peak of the portfolio returning just over or just under £7,500, just shy of a 36% return on investment. And at the very lows, actually, the market has actually recovered quite a bit over the course of today. But as of the app, absolute lows as of yesterday, we were down to just £4,519, a return of 21.5%. So a drop off uh, somewhere in the rounds of about 14, 14.5%, a pretty big sell off in a very short period of time. Now, in terms of the holdings and which ones were most affected, well, if I'm honest, most of them have pretty much been affected throughout the course of the past few days. AMD certainly took a rather large beating, seeing from all-time highs at $161 per share to now just $137 per share, seeing quite a big amount wiped off the value of this position. We were close to a home run on AMD, but obviously that's not the case anymore. 
The same with the likes of Amazon, which is pretty much back to break even. Again, quite a big sell off over the course of the past few uh, months, to be honest, across Amazon, which has very much been trading sideways and very much been one of the worst performers actually in the big tech space over the course of the past 12 months. Apple, very much a similar story. Another sell-off, we saw absolute all-time highs for Apple share price at $181 per share. Hover has recently sold off to the tune of about 5 or 6%. So obviously that's been reflected in this current position. AstraZeneca, however, has been pretty consistent, if I'm honest. Not really too much of a change between now and last week, only changing 0.07% in terms of value. And it's actually up about 3% in the past month. So healthcare stocks, vaccine-related stocks, certainly still doing okay. The next couple I'm going to skip over because that was part of another video challenge in which I'm done, which uh, isn't going all too well right now. But nonetheless, then we have Meta Platforms, which again, Facebook stock or Meta Platform stock has sold off pretty heavily over the course of the past a uh, couple of weeks or so uh, from kind of highs at $346 per share, now trading at just $330 per share. So again, another big sell off, which has very much been reflected in the total return on investment. Then we've got the real big losers of the portfolio, which is currently Palantir Technologies at 95 shares, down 29.7%. That's a pretty big loss, if I'm honest, guys, or unrealized loss. Still very much optimistic on Palantir long term, but as of right now, we're sat heavily in the red. Same with Tattoo Chef, down 33.5%. These are two big, big losers within the portfolio currently. But again, over the course of the long term, I'm still very optimistic that these stocks could very much make a recovery. Then we've got Tesla, who is still very much in home run territory. Obviously, it's not quite what it was when we saw a share price of probably, what, just over $1,200 per share. But we're still trading at gains of 114%, so I can't really grumble too much there. Then we've got Unity Software, down 21.8%. This was a new uh, investment which I added to the investment portfolio, which hasn't performed all too great in the past couple of weeks. But nonetheless, it's another long-term play, um, which I'm very much optimistic about on the basis of the metaverse growing Unity software, very much playing a big part within that. So because of that, I'm going to continue to hold on to this stock. And then lastly, we've got the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which is up about 11%. I think we've lost, obviously, a couple of percent in the past week. But again, it's still very much provided out of all of the holdings in which I have. Very much an element of stability for the investment portfolio. And to be fair, I'll probably add a little bit more into this S&P 500 ETF in order to reduce the overall volatility of my trading 2 on 2 stock portfolio. As of right now, I think the underlying sentiment for me personally is just to buy and hold within my own investment portfolio. Some of these stocks are trading down 5, 10, 15, 20% in some cases. So because of that, I'll still likely cost average my way into the market, capitalize on this small dip in which we've seen. And if the market does proceed to go lower over the course of the coming months, then I'll continue with the same strategy on the whole. So that said, guys, in more positive news, if you did want to see how I actually managed to double the total value of this investment portfolio during 2021, be sure to click on this video here. If you did enjoy this video, guys, be sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next video.